Welcome back to another Remix video. We are going to talk today about CDN caching, which we talked about before, but we're going to get a little bit more in depth this time. Static pre-rendering or static site generation and server rendering. We're going to kind of talk about different approaches and how, um, how, how, we're, how we're generally building websites these days, uh, especially in the React community. Um, there's a lot of talk about uh, static sites and server rendering and, and static uh, pre-rendering and, and incremental static regeneration, stuff like that. So let's start with static site generation. We're going to talk about wh what it means, uh, where the work happens, what parts cost money, uh, what the, the effect is on the user who's vis visiting your page. Um, and then we'll talk about servers and other and CDNs and things too. So static site generation, this is like Gatsby or uh, Next uh, when you're doing uh, get static props. Um, so it's just you and your computer. You've got your website and it's time to build. So you say yarn build, npm run build. And so what happens? Well, your computer's fans spin up, first of all. Uh, and then you're probably going to make some network requests. So you're going to go off to a database somewhere, a CMS somewhere, something that's got the data that you're going to use to build pages out of. So there's work happening over on that server as well when you're building. So it's not just your computer that's, that's doing work here. There's, there's stuff out in the cloud, stuff out on another server somewhere. Um, of course, maybe you have stuff that's all just local on your machine, but uh, most, most sites are going off to some API somewhere and, and getting the data to, to build the static site. So it sends the data back to you, and now you've created a document. And then you do it again, because you got to make your next document. So we're, we're going back and forth and building documents, and we do it again and again and again until we build every single document, every single page in your website. And then both of these places cost money. It costs your, it costs your time sitting there waiting for your build to finish. Um, and it also costs money over on those servers, um, if they're yours <laughs> anyway, uh, for them to process those requests so you can build the data. So, so there's compute that's happening locally. Maybe you're doing a build in the cloud somewhere, something like Gatsby Cloud, you're paying for that too. Um, but anyway, whenever there's compute happening, whether it's some server or it's your local machine, when you're building a static site, that costs money. Now you got a CDN over here and you upload everything to the CDN. So what's really great about static site generation is now that all those documents are pre-rendered, they're pre-built, they're just static, they're just sitting there on a CDN waiting for somebody to come and visit your website to get one of those documents. So they make a request and the CDN doesn't have to do any work at all. It doesn't have to build the page, doesn't have to render anything. It can just send it right on back to the user and the user's super happy. So you're gonna see this emoji a few times. We'll call it the smiley emoji. Um, you get a smiley when it's a fast response and it was a cached response. So the user's happy because it's super snappy. Now let's say you edit some of the data. What does that mean for static site generation? Well, something in your database changed, but your CDN still just has all those documents from the last deploy. So if a user visits the page, they're gonna get a fast response, but it's stale. It's not, it's not up to date yet. Sometimes that's fine. Uh, so we're gonna have the, the sweaty guy for, um, for a stale response. So in order for us to turn that sweaty smiley into just a smiley, we have to rebuild the website again. So it's you and your computer and the server that's got all your data. We've only got one little change document in there, but the way that static site generation works is you've got to rebuild every single one of those things. So that's going to cost money. And then you upload everything again to the CDN. And now um, this means that you build every page for every deploy for any edit. Server side rendering. Let's see what the difference is here. So server side rendering with no CDN involved. Uh, we don't have a big build step. Uh, there's, there's no build step at all. You just upload your, your website to the internet and then you build the pages on demand. So when somebody asks for a page, you build the page on your server and then you send that thing back. But we got the yawner because it's kind of slow. The user had to wait for the page to build. So static sites, it's nice because you built it before. You sat there and waited for the build. Uh, so that your users don't have to wait for the build. Every single visit costs you money. You're, you're running compute on every single one of those things. Uh, however, if you have some pages that are never visited, you never build them. With static site generation, you're building every single page whether people visit them or not. 
So um, with a server, you only build the pages that people visit. If no one visits, the server never builds it and never sends it. So let's throw a CDN into the middle here. So first visitor shows up, they actually make a request to the CDN, not to your server, it's to the CDN. CDN goes, oh, I don't have that document yet. And so it goes over to your origin server. That's, you've maybe heard that term, the origin server. That's like your, your actual web server. And the CDN asks for that, the user's still waiting. Your origin server builds the page, sends the page to the CDN, CDN caches the page, sticks it uh, right there, and then sends it to the user. We still got a yawner because we had to wait for the whole cycle. This is just the first person ever to visit this URL. Cost you money over there uh, to build that page and send it to them. However, with a CDN, the second visitor, they request the page from the CDN. CDN goes, ah, I know this. I've already gotten this from the origin server. So it can leave the origin server alone and send a response right back to the user. So we got a smiler because it was fast and it was cached and it was fresh, it was accurate. Um, saves you money too, because you don't do anything over, you're not building the page. Now this isn't just the second visitor, this is the third, the fourth, the fifth, the hundredth, the millionth visitor. So then there's this idea of max age when you have a CDN. There's these static headers that we talked about last time, not static headers, there's these cache headers, cache control that we talked about last time. And uh, max age is one of the values in it that says, hey, this is, this is how long you should cache this thing. So it's in seconds, so you can say cache this for 60 seconds, cache it for a day, cache it for a year. So let's say that we were caching this for like a day and that time has passed. Well, what's gonna happen is a visitor shows up and says, hey, I want that page. And the CDN goes, oop, this thing's stale, this is old. I was told to rebuild this or to go to the origin server and have it rebuild it um, after a day. So it's been a day, so CDN goes to the origin server and says, hey, I want the page. You build the page on your origin server, uh, comes back to the CDN, CDN puts the new fresh one in, and then sends it to the user. And of course we got a yawner, and then we had to pay money for our server to build that page. But every visitor after that, they now have the fresh page. So what's interesting about this is uh, when we have an edit, um, we don't need to rebuild the whole website like static site generation. It's just the pages that change that need to get rebuilt. And with max age, you can just kind of put it on a timer and you say, you know what? Just every day, if uh, someone comes to this page again, rebuild it. But everyone else for the rest of the day, just give them that version. Or maybe you decide this page is good for a week. And so um, you can just make an edit any time during that week. Uh, it's not gonna show up on your website yet, but after the CDN is like, oh, hey, this thing's expired. I'm gonna rebuild it, uh, then everyone will get the fresh thing. So you kind of get to decide how often do you want it to get built uh, rather than having to build every single page. Here's a, here's a little graph for us to think about um, how this works. So you can see we've got the legend over there. The ship is you're shipping your website, you're gonna deploy it. Uh, the edit, a data change. Yawner is the user waving. Um, Smiley is the cache response, sweaty is cached but stale, so it's fast, and then the max age expired. So if you don't have any caching, you don't have a CDN, you ship the site and everybody's a yawner, but everybody gets fresh data too. So this is kind of what, um, this is what we want to avoid. It's expensive for you because every request, you're, um, you're building a page uh, for that user. Uh, but what's good about it is everyone gets something fresh. If you say max age three, one, blah, 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 that's a year, that's as long as it can be. Basically that means forever. So you ship the website and the first person ever to visit a URL on that, on that website, they get a yawner because they've got to wait for the page to build. But then everybody after that gets a smiler until you edit. Once you edit, you get the sweater because we said, hey, this thing lasts forever. So even if you edit it, the CDN's never going to go back to the origin server and say, rebuild this. You can even deploy your website again. Nothing's gonna change because you told the CDN, hey, this thing's good for a year. So no one will ever get a new version of that document. Uh, this is actually perfect for static assets, for um, the JavaScript that you build um, and your CSS assets, all that kind of stuff. You've probably noticed in a Webpack build or a rollup build that in production, it adds this fingerprint, this like this hash to the name of the file. Um, 
And then any time that file changes, it gets a new hash that you deploy. So that's great because, because the URL changes, uh, the CDN's not gonna, it will never seen that thing before. So if the URL never changes, we can just cache these things forever. Unpackage.com also, it's, it's uh, you, you, can't, you can't change a package once you've published it to NPM. And so Unpackage can, has this very simple case where it can just assume, hey, version 2.5 of some library can't change ever. So uh, once Unpackage builds that page, it can just cache it as for a year, forever. Um, but this doesn't work for your normal URLs, your about page, your contact page, an article, a blog post, anything that has a URL that doesn't change when the content changes. A URL that does not change if the content changes. So it's, it's the URLs that the browser is displaying that like people are typing, right? Not stuff in the network tab, but stuff up in the address bar. So this doesn't work for those. Max age 60. This is interesting. We're saying this is good for 60 seconds, one minute. So you ship the website, you get a yawner for the first visitor, and then for the next 60 seconds, everyone's a smiler. Fast cache responses. You edit the page, you get a sweater because it's fast, but it's stale. But that's fine, it's only gonna be stale for another few seconds, maybe another 10 seconds. And so once the timer hits, then uh, the next visitor is going to cause the CDN to go over to the origin server and then come back again uh, with, with the fresh copy. So they get a fresh version of the page, but they're yawning, it took a little while. But then everyone for the next 60 seconds after that person, they're gonna get fast responses. Um, and, so, and so it goes, every, every 60 seconds, somebody's gonna have a longer response time than everybody else. But everybody gets fresh data, at least for the last 60 seconds. So one strategy to mitigate against having so many yawners in there is to say, you know what, let's set a really long max age. There's this other um, cache control value called S max age, and that's for the surrogate, that's for the CDN. So far, we've been talking about max age. Max age is just in the browser, uh, and the CDN will use it. But if you say max age and S max age, then S max age, the CDN will say, hey, I'm not gonna cache it for max age, I'm gonna cache it for S max age. This is great because you can now uh, tell the CDN to cache it differently than the browser, which allows you to go in and purge. So we got that like red uh, cross out right there. So what you can do is you can have these targeted purges. You can say, okay, on my CMS, whenever I change one of these articles, I know what the URL is. And so now I can go over and I can purge my CDN of that document. And so you make an edit, you write little script, little CMS scripts, uh, that say, okay, this URL, when I change this article, we gotta go purge it over there. And now the next visitor is a yawner, but they get the up-to-date thing and then everyone else is happy after that. So this is a really cool strategy. It, t it takes more time, takes a little bit more code, takes a little bit more planning ahead. Um, but it, if you can automate it, it's a great approach. Um, a targeted purge and a long S max age. You don't want max age long right here because you cannot purge the user's browser. If you don't use S max age with this strategy, um, if you have a visitor who goes to your page, they're gonna have that page for a year. There, there's no way when your CMS edits a page to go to all your users' browsers and say, purge this thing. So you set a smaller max age for the browser, like 60 seconds or a day, and then set a big S max age for the CDN, and then you can set up targeted purges to purge the pages that you're changing. So how does static site generation fit into this? Well, we've got a new icon here, a new emoji, the, the tools, the build. That's the big build where you've got to create every single page on your website before you can deploy it. So we've got the big build first, but now everybody's a smiler because you're getting super fast, fresh responses. You edit the page, now everybody's getting stale stuff until you do the big fat build again, and then you can deploy and then everybody gets, it, gets happy stuff again. So you're basically saying like any time any data changes, you have to redeploy. Um, some websites, that's great. Other times, that can be just way too expensive. Uh, and, and remember, it's, it's not just your machine. You might offload it to some cloud machine. Either way, some machine somewhere is doing that work, whether it's your origin server or it's your, your build server. You're paying for a computer to build those pages one way or the other. You may have heard of Next.js's incremental static regeneration. So uh, the idea here is, hey, you know what? It's kind of a bummer that in static site generation, we kind of, we're, we're kind of forcing 
dynamic data to be static data. We're, 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 we're saying, all right, to, to get fast responses, we kind of have to pretend like our data doesn't change, or at least not very often. But data does change often. Um, so next solution here, which is really cool, and, and, um, and I, I, think it's, I think it's awesome, is incremental static regeneration. So what happens is you do the big build, so you're still gonna build the whole site, every single page in the website, and then you're gonna deploy it. Um, everyone gets fast, fresh responses. And then we got the little, we got the little um, tools in there that represent rebuilding just a single page. So the way the uh, static site re regeneration works is when someone visits a page, they get, uh, it triggers a, uh, a build of just that page. And then it sends the, the current version of that page or the stale version, um, might not be stale, but might be as well. Uh, but it just sends them what it's got already built and then builds it in the background. And so now the person after that first sweaty, per, uh, sweaty emoji, they're going to get the result of the last incremental build. And then someone else visits the page and it kicks off the regeneration again in the background, sends them the current version of the page, builds the new one. And now that new page is just sitting there waiting for the next visitor. Next visitor shows up, it gives them the current version of the page and then sets up a build in the background again. So this way, um, everyone's getting fast responses. Everyone's getting a pre-rendered document. Um, and everyone's getting something pretty fresh. It's probably just off by a little bit. So let's say uh, if someone requested the page at 3 p.m., um, they'd get a fresh one and then they request it at 3.05 p.m., they're gonna get the three o'clock version. Um, and then the person who comes at 3.06, they're gonna get the 3.05 version. So everyone's just gonna be just, just one off. But by, by shifting it by one, everybody gets a fast response. We're gonna see another little graph here that I think will help that, that make sense. But the point here is, someone visits the page, they get the current version, the current built one, and then static regeneration kicks off a build for just that little page so that the next person can get it. So you're always off by one, uh, but it's always fast. Incremental static site regeneration from Next is inspired by a cache header called, uh, a, a cache control value called stale while revalidate. So let's look at what stale while revalidate is, uh, just with the browser. It has nothing to do with static site generation, nothing to do with Next or any of that kind of stuff. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a part of HTTP caching. So SSR with stale while revalidate. This is our first visitor after the max age is up. You remember last time, when the max age is up, visitor asks for it, it's expired, the CDN would go to the origin server to build it, but not with stale while revalidate. Stale while revalidate says, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna give you what I've got right now. This, this document's expired, but I, I, I really wanna just give you what you want right now. Um, so it's stale, but it's fast. And then the CDN, once it's done with that request, it says, okay, I'm gonna go over to the origin server. I'm gonna revalidate this thing. So it starts building on your origin server. If somebody shows up in the meantime, maybe you got like a visitor right after another visitor while your origin server is still building, the CDN is going to go, hey, yep, here, have the stale one again. I'm, I'm still figuring this thing out. So they're, they're good with their request. And then finally our origin server is done, sends the new document to the CDN. CDN caches that new fresh one. And now anybody who shows up afterward, they're going to get the new fresh one. It's pretty cool. So if we add that one in, we say a max age of one. So we're saying, hey, this thing expires every second because our data might be changing every second. We, we think that this page is, is highly dynamic, uh, but, but we don't want the user to have to wait for the server to build that page every time. We want to give them a fast response. So we just shipped it by one. So after the deploy, uh, we first get a yawner. That's just the very first time ever, never again. Even after we deploy, we're not going to get a yawner at this URL. Um, when the max age hits, we get a sweater because it's fast, but it's stale. Uh, we're revalidating and now the next person who shows up is going to get it. So we got a smiler and then the clock ticks again. So then we send something that's stale. We could deploy in the middle. Uh, doesn't affect anything if we deploy in the middle and we don't have to wait for that big static build either. And we don't have to build all those pages. We're, again, we're only building the pages that people visit. Um, so you can kind of look at the two, incremental static regeneration and, uh, and SWR. You can see they're actually the same for the user, right? Everyone's getting fast responses 
Except for that very first, per very first person after a, the initial deploy of this URL ever. And that could be you, right? You make a new post, go visit the page. That was you, you're done, it's already, it's already built. So really none of your users are gonna get, uh, gonna get a yawner. I think that this one kind of helps think about a little bit more. So max age 60, we're saying every 60 seconds, go back to the origin server. So if we got a bunch of requests coming in, everyone's gonna be getting a nice fast uh, response and it's gonna be pretty much up to date. And then once the 60 seconds is up, the next visitor is going to have to wait for that new response. So with max age 60, you can see here, we've got a yawner every single time that this thing expires. And we don't want that. We don't want a whole bunch of our requests to be slow. We want them all to be fast. So incremental static site regeneration is saying, hey, why don't we give them the one from a second ago, right? If, if, it, if we're at the 60 second mark and this thing just uh, is like we're saying, hey, this thing's probably stale now, there's no reason we can't give just one more person that old copy. They're only one second off. If they were there a second earlier, they would have gotten the same thing that we're giving them a second later. So you can see the clock hits and instead of waiting to build, we just send them what we've got. New stuff shows up after that request and now everybody gets uh, new fresh responses. So everyone's smiling, no one's yawning. Now you can see underneath that with max age one and stale while revalidate without incremental static site generation, just server side rendering and a CDN and um, and, and your origin server that knows how to build pages on demand. That, that's, that's, all a, <laughs> that's all a web server is. A web server is an incremental static site generator. A URL comes in, it builds just that page. And then you throw a CDN in front of it and now you're hanging on to that. So you're building static pages just on demand instead of all at once. But you can see here, it's the very same uh, where everybody gets a fast response. We're just, we're just shifting it over by one. We're trading, sending someone something stale that's only a second or two stale um, so that everyone gets a fast response. Really, really cool stuff. So really, it's this question. If you're using cache headers and a CDN and server-side rendering, how often do you want to rebuild? Max age one, you're saying, I wanna rebuild every second. So you gotta think about what kind of a page is this? Is this, uh, well, hey, in the United States, we just had an election and uh, there's all the websites, like every single news website ever had a whole team probably dedicated to building the election graph uh, to show how many votes were coming in in all the different places. And so when a user goes to that page, we don't want them to be yawners. We don't want every single one of them to be waiting for that new data. However, we do want them to have up-to-date data, right? We don't want to cache this thing for like an hour because People want up-to-date data. So with, with stale while revalidate, we kind of get to bend that trade off and we get to say, you know what? Everybody gets a fast response. It's just gonna be one second late or one second off. It's gonna be early because it's gonna be a fast response. So, so what we're saying is like, if you show up at 3.59 and one second, you're gonna get what you would have gotten at 3.59 and zero seconds. So we're just off by a second. But now everything is fast and we build in the background instead of build while the user is sitting there waiting for it. Here's a way to think about it. Uh, you go to a restaurant and you, or a fast food place and you order a burger and you have to sit there and wait for them to build the burger and then come and hand it to you. That's like having no caching, no static site generation, no static site regeneration. It's every time someone asks for a burger, that person has to wait for the burger to be made. Well, the restaurant knows, well, you know what? It's almost lunch and a bunch of people are gonna be ordering burgers, so let's, Let's make a burger before we open, just one burger that's gonna be sitting here. And then you walk up and order it and they can just hand you that burger that they already made. And while you're ordering that burger, they're making another one. And so the next person comes up and it's like, oh, hey, here's, here's another burger for this person. So these burgers are getting pre-made every second, um, but they're not old. They're, they're, they just barely got made. So by doing this max age one, stale while revalidate, this isn't really stale content. It's just, we're not making the user wait for it. We're, we're using the last visitor. Oh, it's not even really the last visitor all that much. All, all we're saying is let's rebuild this page every, every second. And while we're figuring that out, let's just send them what we've got right now. So everybody gets a fast response. Everybody's burger is warm, um, but it's just one second off. 
but probably not because they would have had to wait a second for the page to be built. So it's just, it's such a cool, such a cool technique. Um, so yeah, so if you had an election page, this would be great. Everyone's getting the fast responses and then your server is just every second going to the origin and saying, hey, what do you got now? Hey, what do you got now? Hey, what do you got now? But then the responses can all be handled really fast. Have I, have I explained that enough times? <laughs> uh, so the next one is max age 86400. I think that's a week. And so what we're saying is, you know what, this, this page is good for a week. So we deploy it the very first time. I go and I check out the page, I'm the yawner, and now everybody gets a fast uh, response. I might go edit my CMS, go edit my database, whatever, but I don't care. This isn't like that important of a page that it needs like updates like that. Um, you know, maybe it's a, I was gonna say privacy policy, but that's probably not quite right. It's like an about page, right? Like about us. It's not a big deal if the about page doesn't update. If you edit it on Thursday, it's okay that the update doesn't show up till Monday. So what's cool about this is everyone's getting fast responses. You can go and edit the data. Um, you don't have to rebuild the whole website and deploy it. Uh, just when that week is up, then um, the next person's gonna visit the page, they'll get the stale version, and then the CDN's gonna go off to your origin server and rebuild the page and then serve a nice fresh copy to everybody else. So really cool technique there too for, for pages that don't have that dynamic of data, but you don't have to rebuild the page every time you deploy. Now looking at that calendar icon, you can see that there. That's like saying, okay, let's say that nobody visited the about page for like three months. What this is gonna do since our stale while revalidate is really long since it's a year, is after no one's been to that page for three months and someone shows up, we're still gonna give them the three month old page. They still get a fast response. And that's probably okay for an about us page. That's fine. Um, and then everyone after that is gonna get a fast one. But there might be pages where that's not okay. And you're saying, you know what? Yeah, as long as, as, long as people are requesting this page and we're triggering rebuilds of it, um, so it's pretty fresh, uh, that's fine. But, but maybe you're like, if people quit visiting this page, um, I don't wanna give someone a really old page. That's like, you made the burger and it sat there all day and then someone shows up to buy it. This is like the donuts at the grocery store, right? <laughs> um, you don't wanna buy the donuts at the end of the day, they're no good. Um, and so maybe you have pages like that where you're like, you know what, if it's really stale, uh, I don't, I don't wanna serve that. I'd rather have them wait for the page. That's this next one. Uh, we're saying max age of a week, stale will revalidate 60 seconds. So it's saying, hey, if this thing is expired, and it's been more than 60 seconds since it was expired, right? You're like, these donuts are only good until lunchtime. And then like 60 seconds after, if, if someone shows up 60 seconds after lunchtime, all right, we'll still sell them the donut. But after those 60 seconds, don't, don't give them the crappy donut. Um, let's, let's make a fresh new one for them. And so that's what this last one is saying. Cache this thing for a week. We can make edits. If people are visiting every week, the thing's getting rebuilt once a week in the background. Everyone's getting a pretty fresh document, but like if it's been three months and someone shows up, let's rebuild the page for them. So what I love about stale while revalidate uh, as a cache control, a header value, is that you only build what's visited. You don't build the whole website when you deploy, you just build the pages that people are going to. And that's, like I said earlier, that's what a web server is. A web server is an incremental static site generator. Uh, that's that's, how, that's how, how the whole thing is designed since we had CDNs is someone visits the page, let's build it and let's store it. Then everyone else can just get that thing from the CDN. All right. You wanna see an app? Let's check out an app that uh, implements some of this stuff. Okay, I built this little app to uh, show how a lot of this stuff works out in practice. So uh, it's up here, deployed it to Amazon AWS and I've got uh, Fastly as a CDN in front of it. So. Uh, check this out. I'm gonna search for a GitHub repo, like let's say React Router. Hit enter, that was fast. I'm gonna click uh, React Training React Router. And then this is gonna give me, this one's taking a little bit longer. Uh, this one's gonna give me all of the releases. So I can click on a release. And then it shows me the release notes. Pretty cool. So I could come back and I could look at like, um, I don't know, 5.1, or 
I can come over here and let's search for something like Reach UI. And uh, let's go here, version 0.11.2. Oh, that one's tiny. Uh, maybe this one's got some more stuff. Cool. Chance Strickland does a great job with these releases and just Reach UI in general. Um, okay. Check this out. So over here, I've got my app. And uh, what's, what's interesting here is each, here's each of our routes. So this is the index. And here's our cache control. You know what, we can actually just, we can just look at these. Let's just look at these right inside of the browser. So let's come to network tab. Here's the document, pull this up. And notice the cache header here says public max age 600. So 600, that's 10 minutes. So what I was thinking on this page was, you know, this, this, this home page, it's, it doesn't really have a whole lot of dynamic data in it. Um, uh, I expect the user to be here for maybe 10 minutes at most. And so this max age is saying, browser, you can cache this page for 10 minutes. So if I'm like clicking back and then clicking forward to this page, you can see here, it just comes from the disk cache. So I, I told the browser, just, just hang on to this for 10 minutes. Um, if, if I make a deploy right now in the next 10 minutes, I don't need the user to see that for this page. The page is going to work great for them. So they don't even have to go to the CDN. They don't have to go. And then the CDN doesn't have to go to our origin server or anything. Um, just keep it here locally. And then this next one, XMAT. S max age, I don't even know how long that is. I probably figured it out at some point. So 64, 800 divided by 60. Uh, and then I don't know, divide by 60 again. And then divide by 24, seven, hey. All right, seven days. So uh, what we're saying here is CDN caches for seven days. So if I visit this page and then somebody else visits the page, let's, um, let's just kind of look at, what it looks like here. If we do it, actually, I'll just hit reload. And we're going to see down here, X cache hit. So, <coughs> excuse me, somebody else already visited this page uh, within this week. And so when I come to visit it now, uh, I get it straight from the CDN and I didn't hit my origin server. So browser cache for 10 minutes, the user session, I don't care if I deploy and they don't get an update. S max age for a week. Now, if something changes, I can go and purge. Like if there's a really important change for this page, I can go purge my CDN and I know within 10 minutes, every single user is gonna get the new page. And so that's why I've got the max age and the S max age. So it gives me that ability. I can't purge the browser cache, but I can purge the CDN cache if I've got a really important uh, fix or change to this page for them. Then I've got this stale while revalidate of a year. So I'm saying, hey, you know what? If someone shows up, um, so it's been a week, so let's say it's, it's Saturday night at midnight, and, uh, and that's when it's going to expire, and someone shows up at 12.01 after it expires, just send them what the page looked like at midnight, uh, don't make them wait, and then go and rebuild the thing for the next people. So, kind of cool, I have, I have a bunch of control here. I can say, browser cache it for 10 minutes, I expect the user session to just be about 10 minutes, so I don't need to change it on them. If there's an important change, I can purge my cache. And I'm not going to be rebuilding this page any more than once a week. So I'm like, yeah, this page might change once a week. And if it does, cool. Everyone will get those updates within a week. Unless it's important, then I'll purge it. So uh, now let's look at, uh, um, so if I come in here to reach UI, let's look at this one. So this one's cache headers are different. Max age 600. So once again, oh, sorry, this is, this is the results. So this is the same page. So let's actually look at one of these. And so I come in here, this one is max age one. Stale while revalidate a year. So this is the case where we're, we're making the burgers ahead of time, but we're giving everybody nice fresh burgers. Think about why I picked that for this page. It's like Dora the Explorer for web developers. <laughs> this, so, so, so imagine, imagine you are the one cutting a release for Reach UI and you're using this website. You like this website for seeing what your, what your release notes look like. So you just cut a release and you come over here and you want to see that release right here, right? So we're saying, hey, we want really fresh data here. The data here 
uh, people are expecting to see this. If, if someone launches a new release of something and they announce it on Twitter, people are gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna go check out the GitHub releases thing and, and, and read it over there. And so people are gonna expect really fresh stuff right here. Um, and then since we did MaxH1 and still already validate a year, everyone's gonna get something super fresh. Um, but uh, it's gonna be really fast too. No one's gonna have to wait for us to go off to GitHub. See each one of these loaders, if I come over here into these routes, um, it's right here, org repo. Like we're actually, we're actually fetching from GitHub a, a couple of things here. And so we don't want the users to have to wait for that. We're saying, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just rebuild in the background every second is really what this says. Rebuild once a second, give everyone a fast response. And then when we come here, look at the headers on this page. Public max age 300, so that's like five minutes. S max age 1800, divided by 60, divided by 60. Um, Oh crap, I'm not good at math. 30 minutes, <laughs> 30 minutes. So we're saying this is good for 30 minutes. Um, kind of interesting, so we're saying, so five minutes for the person looking at this page in the browser, right? They might come back here in the next five minutes and 30 minutes for the CDN. But this is a recent release, okay? So hang with me here for a second. This, this, is, this is the punchline with Remix and why we think our, our, uh, our, our headers API is really cool. Um, imagine you are the one who made this release. Um, well, let, let's say I'm just making the website. I'm not that person yet. I'm not that person yet. Um, let's come and look at an older release. Look at this one, S max age 26, eight. I don't even know what that is. That's like, I think that's like a month. I think that's a month. So what we're saying is, hey, these release notes are good for a month. And that makes sense. Release notes should have a really long max age because they're not gonna change. We don't need to rebuild this page when people come. It's, we could probably cache it even longer than that because of their release notes. But this other release, the one that's more recent, we only cached it for, I can't remember what that was, 30 minutes. So let's check out the caching over here. So we go and we fetch the release and then we go and we hit uh, the GitHub Markdown API to build the markdown. So kind of an expensive request, that's why it's nice to cache it. But look what we did for the max age. We said, get max age, pass in the published at. So down here in get max age, we're saying, if it was recently published, let's give the author a chance to make edits. But after the first day, we'll aggressively cache this for a month. So we're saying, ah, oh, here's how long one day is, uh, date.now minus when it was published. If it was less than a day, just 30 minutes. So lots of people are hitting this page when something gets released. So we do want to cache for 30 minutes for people so that our origin server isn't super busy. Um, but if you're the author, you're like, I wanna be able to make edits to this thing and have it show up on your website. That's cool. So normally when you think about how long should you cache something, it's like, what kind of website is this? Right, people think, oh, what, what's, a good, what's a good website for static site generation? Well, that's, that's a good question, but a whole website? You're saying the whole website is gonna have the same caching needs, the same caching strategy? And so then you come down a level and you say, well, these specific URLs, a lot of, a lot of cache headers, um, you get to define with like this kind of an API. And it's like, what's the source? And it's like, oh, docs, whatever. And then, um, and then you say like uh, headers, um, and then you can put the cache control. Uh, so so you, get to, you get to define that stuff. Uh, a lot of hosts do it this way. You get to define the cache headers um, per URL. And that's another great way to say it, right? So you're thinking, you're either thinking the whole site, well, that's not quite enough. So then you come down to just URLs and it's like, okay, that's, that's a good spot to decide cache headers and how long you should cache, how long you should rebuild, whether it's static site generation or whether it's, it's server-side rendering. But with Remix, you can come down one more level 
and you can say, what about my data? I want to change my caching strategy based on my data. Because if you are the one writing these release notes, and you're making edits, and those edits aren't going to make it there for a month, that's annoying. So instead, we can say, hey, you know what? We'll give you a day. We'll give you a day to go and fix those release notes. And then we're going to aggressively cache it for a long time after that. Super cool. All right, so how did we actually accomplish this in Remix? So if we look at this right here, um, we returned JSON from our, from our loader. So all right, here's, here's the data for this page. And then here are the headers. And those headers made it up to the route. So this is the actual like markup, the, the React stuff. And the export, the headers export, we, tell, we give you the loader headers. And so then you can say, oh, hey, you know what? Um, I'm just going to use the headers from the loader for this HTML page. And yes, I'm still doing that thing where <laughs> you, you may have noticed on the network tab, we don't have any JavaScript on this page because uh, I couldn't justify it. I couldn't think of like, why do I need, uh, here, let's go to, yeah, let's do React Router again. Like, why do I need JavaScript? Oh, there is one line of JavaScript actually right here, this thing to select it. <laughs> this is my favorite. Are you ready? Script type JavaScript dangerously set in or HTML. And so after we do this and we just go select that. So you can do another, do another search. You wouldn't even notice that there's not JavaScript. You'd think that this was all client side rendered with how fast it is with the CDN. Let's, let, let's, uh, let's, let's get two users. Let's get two users on the page. And then we're gonna, we're gonna say goodbye on this, on this uh, video. All right, now we've got two users here. And uh, let's watch how, um, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna reach UI again. That's super fast for both of these users because it's already cached. Um, I should probably tell you when I'm clicking search. And now I come over here, I click on this, click. It's, I mean, it's immediate because this is already cached on the CDN. Um, I don't think we have clicked on 0.5.2. So I'm gonna click this, click. But that was what, like a half a second or something like that? Now watch over here, immediate. Let's go back and do another one. This time I'm gonna go 054. Took about half a second, come over here 054, click, immediate. So we can see, so we can see in the network pane when we click this, it says, cache miss. So I come over here and I do 062. We can see super fast. Cache hit. So there you go. Your website, your web server is already a static incremental static site generator. You just got to get a CDN in there and the right cache headers and you can decide how often do we want to rebuild this page? And we only want to rebuild the pages that are visited. Okay, so I've actually just got one more Dora the Explorer question for you. Can you even build this website with static site generation? <laughs>